privilege to be sitting, to be standing beside these young people. Don't you think so? Yeah. Amen. Uh, and we have mega fest elsewhere. We have mega fest here, and they'll be leading out to, tonight in the singing of the songs. So at this time, we will bow our heads as prayer is offered. Dear Heavenly Father, please may you bless us and protect us, and please may you bless the preacher, Pastor Terence Haynes. Please may you be with him, and please may you help him preach the word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Five, three, four.
that we can come in your house, in, in your sanctuary, to worship and praise thee. We thank thee for friends online, first of all, members and visitors alike. We are glad that they have tuned in tonight to hear another inspiring word coming from your man servant. And tonight we want to welcome our guests once again, and we pray that the Holy Spirit be with them and with us also. I pray, Lord, that as we Listen to your man servant tonight, Lord, that we will hear another inspiring message from on high. I pray that you will continue to give him that, that, that clarity of voice that we can understand and that we will go away from here feeling a thirst and wanting to come back once again. I also pray that you will bless us mightily. Help us that the words from your man servant resonate within our hearts, not only us, but those in the surrounding area of this community. 
I pray that you would just give him that voice once again, that he will proclaim your message from on high, and the community will really listen attentively, know that being that they're not here, but yet they're hearing his voice, Lord, they're hearing you also. So, Father, I ask your blessings and may your spirit tabernacle here once again with us. And may everything that's said and done here may bring honor and glory to your master's name. We ask these mercies in Jesus' wonderful name of thanksgiving. Amen and amen. And a very pleasant good night to you. Okay. The distinguished pleasure is mine tonight to welcome each and every one of you here to this, the third night, third week of our New Life in Christ series. Now, I had a conversation with one of my friends who's watching online. I hope she's watching tonight. Pastor speaks Jamaican. She is Trinidadian. And I asked her if she was taken in this series. She said yes. But she found that the church too quietly, quietly. So I asked her what she meant by that. So tonight we have to raise the roof off this place when I say. And by the time they find it, it will be down Grisette's. Pastor will ask Brother Joseph Wood to go and get it back. So tonight, church, if you happy and you know it, say amen. amen. If you're happy and you know it, say praise the Lord. And if you're happy and you really want to show it, shout hallelujah. Amen. So let her take that. Good. So our opening song tonight is number 340, Jesus Saves. And let us continue to raise the roof off this um, place. Thank you. Heard joyful song, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Shall we stand? That's our stand. We have heard a joyful song, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Spread the gladness all around, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Please sit. Good night, everybody. Oh, it's indeed a privilege and a pleasure to be here again.
tonight singing that beautiful song, Shout Salvation Full and Free. Jesus is. Amen. Amen. Jesus indeed saves. I want to join and extend a very special welcome to those of you who are viewing online. The last time I checked, there were a combination of about 180 something folk, and it grows as the, the, the time goes by. So we welcome you to our session again this evening and trust that you'll be richly blessed as we go through this terrific, tremendous Tuesday night. And the topic is, the verdict is in. The verdict is in. Wow, are you guilty or not guilty? We'll soon find out, we'll soon find out. I wanna say a special thanks to our technical team for the work they're doing, um, for the ushers and the prayer warriors, prayer ministers, I should, we should call them really and all those who are participating in making this program what it is, or, or musicians and those who are involved. Thank you so very much. Um, tonight we will be listening to that again, tremendous topic, the verdict is in, and I just want you to turn to someone closest to you, next to you, give them a broad, choose a night smile, say something nice, and welcome them to the house of God. Come on. Amen. Let me assure you, it is not quiet in here at all. The Lord is good. Okay, at this time, we shall have our quiz for this evening. Following our quiz, we will have our uh, health nugget by Nurse Brenda Hall. Good night. Now the lady in Jamaica needs to hear you, so good night. Good night. Yes, please. Now, I have to... I just want to swift, quickly recap the questions for last night. Blood is thicker than milk. The answer was blood is thicker than water for the presentation. The name Naomi speaks means sickly. That was false. It meant it means pleasantness. And question four that most people got wrong. Ruth's daughter's-in-law returned with her to Bethlehem. That was false. Not daughters, but daughter. Beautiful. So on to tonight's questions. Number one. Laban deceived Jacob by exchanging Rachel for Leah. Laban deceived Jacob by exchanging Rachel for Leah. True or false? Question two. The name Joseph means God has added to me. The name Joseph means God has added to me. And question three, listen carefully. Joseph's first dream or vision was about the sun, moon, and 11 stars bowing down to him. Joseph's first dream vision was about the sun, moon, and 11 stars bowing down to him, true or false? Question four, we must humble ourselves before God. We must humble ourselves before God, true or false? Shh. <laughs> Question five, for God to work his purpose in our lives, we must let go of the past and forgive. For God to work his purpose in our lives, we must let go of the past and forgive. True or false? <laughs> Thank you, have a good night. <laughs> Yeah. 
continuing um, the topic of the health nugget, who wants to guess? The topic of the health nugget, who wants to guess? You've seen the little demo. Laughter, the gift of laughter. Congregation, would you like to join them? I think they're laughing at me. <laughs> Maybe I look funny, but that's okay, because I like to laugh too. And what goes around comes around. Another time it be their turn for me to laugh, and he who laughs to last, laughs the best. Okay, um, I think my definition of laughter would be, it's a gift from God, it's a byproduct of joy. The Webster Dictionary defines laughter as a way in which we show emotion. And we do that with a chuckle or an explosive vocal sound. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 17, 22, a merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. A good laugh has both short-term and long-term effects. And in my three minutes here, I cannot really go through, so I'm gonna give you the basics. So I'm gonna be looking first at the short-term effects. When you start to laugh, um, congregation, it lightens your load mentally. When you start to laugh, it induces physical changes in your body and can stimulate many organs. It enhances the intake of oxygen from the air. Laughter stimulates the heart, the lungs, and muscles, and, increasing endorph and increases endorphins that are released into your brain. It activates and releases your stress response. A rollicking laugh fires up, then it cools down your stress response, and it can increase and then decrease your heart rate and the blood pressure, which results in a good relaxing feeling. It soothes tension. Laughter can also stimulate circulation and aid muscle relaxation, both of which can help reduce some of the physical symptoms of stress. And some of the long-term effects are, laughter improves your immune system. Negative thoughts can affect your body by bringing stress into your system and decreasing your immunity. By contrast, positive thoughts and actions can release neural peptides that help fight stress and potentially more serious illnesses. Laughter can relieve pain. It can increase personal satisfaction. Laughter can make it easy to cope with difficult situations. It can improve your mood and self-esteem. We are told in the Bible, in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 4, it tells us of a time to weep and a time to laugh. Genesis 2, verse 16, Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all who are here with me will laugh with me. And Job 8, 21 says, He will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with rejoicing. If James 1, 17 says, as it does say, that every good and perfect gift comes from God, then I believe that a joyful heart and experienced laughter is from God. Amen. The Bible is clear that there's a time for us to laugh, and obviously, it is not appropriate to laugh during a somber movement, as they did, or in a serious conversation. However, there are moments, excuse me, there are moments when laughter is welcome, and where we should enjoy the blessings of laughter. I believe that when we laugh out loud, demons are chased away. God is the giver of joy and laughter, which is a byproduct of joyfulness. Demons are Satan's evil representatives. We do remember that one third of them who are sent up from heaven, they are real, ladies and gentlemen. They do not want any part of heaven, and in heaven there is there was and is joy. The demons do not want us to experience that joy that comes from serving God. Have you laughed today? Yes. Any of you, you have? If you have not, ask the Lord to fill you with joy that you may live in his sweet victory and gift of having an attitude of laughter. So let me hear you roar with laughter right now, all of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Listen, 
and gentlemen, this has been your health tip for tonight. Compliments of the Advent Hope Columbus Seventh-day Adventist Church in Ohio. I am Brenda Hall of the Church at Ebenezer. Thank you, Sister Hall. At this time, to minister to us in music is Sister Tamara Ford. As she ministered to us, and may your hearts be blessed. Good night, everyone.
Good night, everyone. At this yeah. time, we collect the offering, but before we do so, let's pray. Our Father, the chart in heaven, we do thank you for who you are, a loving, caring, understanding God. We thank you for watching over us today in everything we do in traveling, at work, wherever. We know that you're a wonderful God. You love us, you care, and you will never leave us nor forsake us. Help us to continue to hold on to your unchanging hands. And Lord, now as we offering is being collected, I pray that it will go to help others to learn of you, because each one of us need to learn of you. Bless us, Lord, and keep us now and forevermore. These and all mercies we ask in your precious name. Amen. 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 Give us with a grateful heart. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks. Is given Jesus Christ, his son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his son. And I Good evening, everyone. Good evening. We are glad to be here. What about you? Yes. As the song said, give thanks with a grateful heart. Have you been giving thanks for the messages God has been giving? Amen. Amen. I don't claim any glory. As I said, I'm just a mailman. And hopefully, you will let him know, God, that he sent the right message for you by your response to the message. What do you say? Amen. Well, tonight we're going to go straight to the screen and we have our keyboard and bass man lined up and we're going to stand. But before we do a pause, pause, just, just came back, just looking at Pastor Dali, he's in the right place. <laughs> he's in the right place. See, that's, a, that's a dangerous seat. <laughs> For this moment, it's good. Now, now, I almost missed it. But let me see the person who is here for the very first time. Just stand right up. No, no shame. Stand right up. We want to recognize you. Stand Amen. right up. There's nothing called shyness. Amen. 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 You're here for the very first time, so don't play shy. Just stand right up. We have a token. Don't sit down until we get it. There's, there is gifts awaiting, and, and it's important because we want to have a tangible gift that you remember us by. No, it, 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 won't, it won't make you come back. Something else will make you come back. That's the Holy Spirit. Amen. But we want to leave something tangible in your hands. You can sit once you get the gift. Imagine that. Any of my guests, you've been here all night, all yesterday, all last week, all the week before. You've not missed a night. Any of my guests starting first. Any guests, you've not missed any night. 
All right. Only one night. All right. So that means we've, we're, we're turning over. That's all right. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a prophet, maybe a false one, Pastor. <laughs> I, I feel tomorrow night we're going to got somebody new. I don't know. But that's all right. Well, I'm looking at my device, and on one stream, we have 200 persons. And I know if I add the other stream, we're over 200 persons. And, and I want to welcome you at night. I always give you the circle of welcome. Hello now. Somebody's watching. And, and some people, you know, they, they, they say, I'll see you tonight, but you won't see me. Hint, hint, they're watching me. <laughs> so I say, praise God that the message is going out. People are watching. And, and somebody gave me a wonderful idea today. They say, Pastor, when this program is finished, package this thing and run a virtual crusade. Mm, I said, right. wow. I said, I'll think about it. But, but for now, let's complete what we start. Amen. So let's stand. We're going to stand. We're going to do our, our, our fellowship song, as I call it. Afterwards, we sing it once, and then we sing it a second time. The second time I have fun with you, I get to come near you. The first time is just warming up so that you can, quote, unquote, sing it better the second time. So over to my penis. Yes, please. Here we go. New life in Christ, abundant and free. What glory shine, what joys are mine, what wondrous blessings I see. My pathway is saved, my suffering and strife forever gone. There's a bright new dawn for in Christ I have found new life. That sounds good. Now, hands across the aisle. Make sure you're not standing alone. Make sure you, you can reach somebody. I'm going to be coming around to, to be with you to sing this song. So if you're in a pew by yourself, hello, get with somebody or somebody come to you. And we're going to sing this song tonight because it's what it is. But remember, what direction are we going to move to first? The right and not the left. Right side, here we go. New life in Christ above. Now I can move. I'm taking a different route tonight. My what one blessings I see. Oh, yes, now my past with his sin. My suffering and strife forever gone. There's a bright nude. One more time. Let's hear you go. Life cries abundant and free. You sound good. Oh, she's making it. I What's tell it? For in Christ I have found new life. Oh, stay with those hands still connected. Don't let them go. We're going to the throne of grace. And we're going to ask God to come down to do something I can't do, but just the message he's given us. None I but Christ, Lord, I kneel. Your children stand, yet we all are waiting. Not I but Christ, Lord, I'm a sinner saved by grace because I believe in faith. Yet tonight, Lord, one more time, we plead for your presence and your sweet anointing. Not I, but Christ. Lord, we've seen you work in the past. We look forward for you to work in the future, but just about now, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Be seated. Oh, yes. 
And somebody asked me, where you got that thing from? Well, that's a trademark. I've done it in Spanish. Don't ask me to say it in Spanish tonight. <laughs> but we've done it in other languages, you know, and, and it's just my way of focusing the message to God. Amen. It's not about me. I mean, I have fun with you, but truth be told, I'm just the mailman. Mm. Well, tonight, the topic is... I think we're there. There we are. What is? The verdict is in. The verdict is in. And friends, I, I must confess that when I think about the verdict is in, I think about the networks, the U.S. networks. Mm. Some of you have the cable TV or you have the stick or you have something, but you can watch on demand certain pictures. And when you look at it, I'm not advertising them because one of them has retired and that is Judge Judy, Scheid, I, 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 it's a Scheindlin. I can see who watch it a lot. <laughs> they know the name. She's now retired from her TV study show, Judge Judy. Then there's Greg Mathis. And when I hear his name, I remember a sweet sister Mathis from Vermont in St. Vincent. I hope she's streaming. If not, somebody will tell her her name was called. But there then the hot bench where you have more than one judge giving the verdict. And, and you have there Tanya Acker and Patricia DeMango and, and Larry Blackman. Sound like a big name, a Blackman day. But what is interesting is that these are shows. They, they make ratings. The verdicts they give are real. But before they're heard, you have to send a, a submission before the judge so he can look at it, and then you come to court. Now, sometimes when the show is going on, you are trying to guess the verdict. Mm. And sometimes you get it right, and you, you say, see, man, I could be a judge too, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, sure, bet not. <laughs> and then sometimes you don't get it, you don't agree with the judge, and, and you say, I don't like how she behaved, you know, she ain't giving the man a chance to talk, and she carry him along like that. Some of you watch it and you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But here's the truth. When I look at that and I've been in court, real court, Saturn was a witness and gave evidence. And I realize when you think about a high court, and this is the real court in Barbados for those around the world viewing it. It looks beautiful here, but you don't want to go in there. <laughs> if you have to appear before they in about the building now, it's about, Lord, let me get out. <laughs> Somebody knows what I'm talking about. When you look at the real court, it is not entertainment, it's serious decisions. Yes. And the decisions have lasting effect, sometimes life or death. Literally. Mm -hmm. You didn't get that. Yes. Now, I know in Barbados, the death penalty by way of privy counsel and certain rulings is not being applied. But it's almost life sentence when you can't walk about at your own will. True. Can't go where you feel like. And you got sometimes people younger than you giving you commands like you're a little child. Mm. I've gone to prison to visit. <laughs> <laughs> I catch you, you know, you want to, we do, we do. I've gone to prison to visit and I've come back out. I almost got locked in. Mm. Yeah, I was so mingled with the, the, the inmates that when they're ready to leave, I saw the door close. I said, hey, I'm coming. And I said, let me get out. <laughs> but it is not nice to lose the power of your freedom. That's true. Worse yet, solitary confinement. Because it really goes against what God says. It's not good for man to be alone. Be alone. Mm -hmm. So some of you think, well, I can do it and go in jail and chill out. You better not do that. You might regret. Some people are saying, you think I care about you, man? Man, dagger, you don't go and sit down. You're going to regret you say that. Hmm. Somebody's hearing me now. Yes. Some of you don't have the constitution. You go crazy. Mm -hmm. And I've heard stories where people, even a, by a belt or shoelace, and hang themselves. Hmm. Okay. That's why they take off everything when you go to jail. Yes. I tell you, I went to prison. Can't deal with it. But I came back out. Hmm. I went visiting. But you know what touches me is that God says there is going to be a judgment day too. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this message is not just for visitors. This message is for everybody. Oh, yes. Tout le monde, as the French would say. Mm -hmm. And what is important is that when you come to this verdict, what faith community you're in does not count. Mm, all right. You're going quiet. When you come to this court 
and the verdict is given, they're not going to say, well, he was a preacher in a program in a church, so we can give him a blight. Mm, My no, trainees no. know what a blight means. Mm -hmm. Hello now. It is going to be based on things I'll show you tonight. And as I've said before, let your Bibles come to church. Did you bring yours? Yeah. I have mine. I have mine in my bag. I have mine here, the big one. And I have the reader there to read. And I have it on my device too. We are worded up tonight. I hope you bring your notepad because I want you to take notes and, and, and check these texts out. If not, get the note application on your phone to take the notes or screenshot. Hello now. Or watch the stream over again. And, and, and it is not fair to you that you will let your eternity depend on another human being That's who's right. made up their mind already. That's true. You miss mm. me. Rita, you're with me tonight, Rita. Yes. It's not enough to depend your future on somebody else's future. True. You know, my mother always said the upholder is worse than the thief. Yeah. Hmm. And I know if you've ever got in trouble to court, even if you didn't hold the gun or you didn't pull the trigger, you, but you were in a getaway car, you're going to get the same punishment or more. Mm -hmm. That's true. So I'm saying to somebody tonight, search this out for yourself. Amen. Oh, yes. Let God's word be the final verdict in your life. Amen. So let's go. I have set the sermon in a number of questions. I'm going to ask them and answer them from the word of God. And, 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 and I hope, and the time looks good, so, so we're going to try to stick within the time, you know. But what is important is that you leave with a clear understanding. And I feel impressed to pray again. Okay. That's how serious this message is to me. Mm -hmm. So bow your heads with me, friends. Heavenly Father, this message is one that can cause people to be afraid. Mm. They're going to think I'm preaching at them, sending them to hell before the time. But Lord... I cannot miss this subject because it is central in the very plan of gospel. When we look at the, the earliest demonstration of the gospel, and we saw it two weeks ago, there is judgment involved. Oh, yes. When we look at the gospel coming down to earth in living flesh, Jesus, we saw judgment involved. Mm -hmm. And tonight, Lord, we are looking at the important text so that your children can have a heads up and a heart in and a soul free and that judgment they can smile when the verdict is in. Amen. Hear our prayer tonight. Touch my lips fresh. Pause the time, Lord. Free the soil up. Pull out the roots. Dig out the stones. Chase away the birds and let fruit be born for your name and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. and amen. You didn't see me do that before. Have you seen me do that? Mm -hmm. That's how serious tonight's message is about. And I'm thankful that you are appreciating the gravity of it. So let's move forward. First of all, in Acts chapter 17, verse 30 and 31, it tells me that God has set a date of judgment. Let's read it. Hear what it says. And the times of this ignorance God winked at. Uh-huh. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. So pause. Paul goes to the Areopagus, a place where erudite people came to discuss things and philosophize. But they were superstitious, or some people say religious. Hmm. And Paul saw a statue, and they were so careful, they did not want to offend an, a god they didn't know. So, so just like how there is the grave of the unknown soldier... They have an altar or had an altar to the unknown oh God, God. just true. in case he existed that they didn't know him and offend him. They placed the altar there. Mm -hmm. And Paul said, that's my entry point. There is a God they don't know, a God who loves them, a God Amen. who created them, a God who sustains them and a God who died for them. Amen. Amen. So Paul took the opportunity and stood where the altar was and got some attention and people came by and he, he started to preach and somewhere in his sermon he said this, in ignorance God winks. Yes. So when you don't know better or when you can't do better and you're living up to what you know, you get a wink. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now the wink doesn't say you're out of trouble, you know. It just said God winks. But what's the last part of the text? It says, but God is calling men somewhere. Everywhere. Everywhere to do what? Repent. That's to show sorrow for sin and a change of behavior. Mm -hmm. 
It's not just enough to accent that what the preacher is saying or what the word is saying, but you got to change your ways. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Somebody's hearing me. Mm -hmm. Oh, but what is interesting is this. Watch verse 31. Paul goes on. He says what? Because he Why has do they have to repent? Day. He hath appointed a day. Hold on. Why do they have to repent? Because they're wicked? No. Not just like that. That's right. Because God is a, a spiteful God? Not no, not because of that. The word because says it is linked to what comes before. before. He says God is calling you to repent because what next, reader? He hath appointed a day uh -huh. in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. Did you get that? He will judge the world according to the Adventist doctrine. No. No, 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 no. He will judge the world according to Catholic doctrine. No. No, 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 no. He's going to judge the world according to the Wesleyan doctrine. No. What did it say there, reader? In righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. Did you get that? Yes. He says, I am going to judge you according to the righteousness. Hey, did you get that? Yes. By, by that, that man. man who he hath ordained, mm -hmm. set apart, chosen, wherefore... Whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. Did you get that? There's only one man we know raised from the dead that God sent, Amen. and that's Jesus. Amen. Amen. So in essence, he's saying, listen, I have sent a man who represents righteousness. I've sent a man that declares what I'm looking for, and I'm going to judge you according to what he's going to do. Yes. That's serious business. So if you don't know Jesus in a, a pot of stew, hmm. hello now. So I asked my first question. All right, Lord, since there's a day that you're going to have, hello now. Uh, I, I'm asking, let me get my notes up. Since, since there's a day you're going to have a judgment, who will judge us? Hmm. Question. Since they choose, you know, some lawyers, when they know which judge is there, they change courts. True. Yes. You ain't get that. There are some judges that don't play when it comes to rape. Mm -hmm. Not that any play with it, but there's some that put down some stiff sentences. Yes. There are some who, when you come there with traffic violations, they're serious on the traffic. Yes. You don't want them to schedule you to go before that judge because you're going to cry. You know you ain't coming out free. Hmm. I know about a judge, I think he was family to me. Depending on how much speed you were going, that's the multiplier of your sentence. Mm. All right. So if you were doing double digits, he's going to multiply the sentence. Hmm. I'm saying depending on a judge, you'll change the court. But I got news for you, friends, no is that there is only one court that's and one, one judge. judge. Yes. So you can't go to somebody else's chambers and, and, and come in there with your, I, I exposing it tonight. Come in there with your pocket inside out. Mm, and somebody right. look at you and say, what happened to your jacket? But that's a code for somebody to know who you're coming in. Mm, that's true. Some of you too innocent. Your mind pure. Don't try to understand it if you don't understand it. Keep it that way. They gone quiet, reader. <laughs> so who's the judge? What does it say there? John 5, 22. Who's speaking? Jesus speaking. Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees. He says, for the Father, what? Judgeth no man. Did you get that? Yes. God on the throne will not judge you. Mm -hmm. All right. But, that's right. You're in trouble now. Mm -hmm. God on the throne is not going to be the one who is ju judging you. What did Jesus say? But hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Did you get that? Yes. The same Jesus that came down here and died for us is the one who will be the judge. Yes. Hmm. Now that could be good news or bad news depending on what you did with the son. That's true. You didn't get that <laughs> now. It could be good news or bad news. But I have a question. I told you I have questions tonight and I'm going to let the Bible answer it. My, my question is, why let Jesus judge us? Hmm. He was a Jew. I'm a Gentile. He kept the Sabbath because he was a Jew. I'm a Christian. I keep Sunday because of the resurrection. That's some of the arguments some people will make. Mm -hmm. That's all fear that you got a biased Jew judging me. And somebody say, careful now, that's anti-Semitic language. Mm -hmm. But let the Bible speak for itself tonight. Why Jesus and not anybody else? Hear what it says. Hebrews 2, 17 and 18. Help me read, reader. And read along with him because you got to make sure he's reading it right. Mm, that's right. 
Wherefore in all things it behoved him to be like unto his brethren. Uh-huh. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest uh -huh. in things pertaining to God. Yes. To make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Now pause a minute. When we hear high priest, we don't think about that. We know about priests. We know about bishop. We know about reverend. But in the Jewish context in which this was made, a high priest was the one who represented the people to God. Oh God that's right. He came before God pleading for man, yes. his people. He was the one that officiated and presented the sacrifices as God required on behalf of the people. Oh. Mm -hmm. So note, God made Jesus our high priest. Amen. Amen. So first things first is that he represents us. Yes. But that's not only the reason why he's going to judge us. I like verse 18. Boom. Hear what it says. For what? In that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Did you get that? Praise the Lord. So when Jesus judges us, he knows what we went through. Mm -hmm. Because he went through it. That's right. He knows if our excuses are valid or false. Mm -hmm. And I got news for you. His background was worse than some of us. That's true. None of us have been born in a stable. Mm. Hmm. None of us has been so poor like him. Not only that, but he was tempted in all points. Not like us, because some of us only got one sin we're wrestling with. Maybe it's pornography, or gambling, or marijuana, or cigarettes. But Jesus felt the temptation of all of that combined. Hmm. They gone quiet. Yeah. So when you say, boy, Jesus didn't understand, you know, this little thing that threw me down. He does understand. Oh, yes, he does. Because the scripture says he was tempted in not some, but all, all points, points. As we are tempted. Yet. Yet without sin. Amen. Amen. So when he stands and looks at your evidence, he knows the strength of the temptation. And you might say, but they said they had weed in the, in the Bible. How we, how we know what we feed like? He didn't have TikTok in the Bible. How we know what TikTok? You see, those are the devices the devil used to tap into your brain. There's something in your brain called pleasure center. And regardless of what it is, it's going to stimulate the pleasure center in your brain. And any temptation, it will do the same effect on the pleasure center. That's why you get addicted. Yes. And Jesus had the same effect because he had the same brain like ours, the pleasure center. Mm -hmm. But he was able to withdraw and he was able to be victorious. Amen. I'm saying it straight tonight. You don't like me, you can get up and leave. I won't hold it against you. Come back tomorrow night, I'll still hug you and kiss you. <laughs> but if you stay, be honest with yourself and listen. Amen. Amen. Somebody's hearing me. I'm not being arrogant. I'm just saying it as it got to be. Too many of us get politically correct that you can't tell people the truth. Mm. You gotta make up terms to make people happy. Oh, you're just speaking alternate facts. We just call that lies. lies. That's right. <laughs> if it ain't truth, it's a lie, but we just call it alternate facts. I don't know whose facts it is. Hmm. Oh, but it doesn't stop there. Watch, watch the next question. What is the standard he's using? Mm -hmm. Now, yes. if I go to court today, the laws of Barbados would be my standard. Yes. And the constitution of Barbados would be my standard. Mm -hmm. And even if you come from anywhere around the world, but the police arrest you in Barbados, in Barbados. when you go before the court, is the Barbadian standards you're going to be using. Mm -hmm. Equally, if I go overseas and I'm driving on the wrong road and cause an accident, the police will lock me. And when I go before the judge, and it's not Judge Judy, nor Mattis, nor Hot Bench, the real judges will be before me. They're going to pull out the law and constitution of the United States and judge me from that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what are we judging? What are we going to be judged by? Judge. Let the Bible speak. James 2, 10 to 12. I want you to read this carefully. Hear what it says. For whosoever shall keep the whole law uh -huh. and yet offend in one point, uh -huh. he is guilty. Real and come again, read it. I read something wrong there. I may have missed something there. Start from the beginning again. Yeah, I read it wrong. Start again. Mm -hmm. he, he tried. <laughs> in Jesus' name. I, I love him in no say. 
For yes. whosoever shall keep the whole law, keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point. How much points? One point. One point is what? Guilty of all. But that's not fair. Objections, Your Honor. Objections, mm. Your Honor. You're leading the witness. That's not a good objection. <laughs> but here's the truth. What that just tells me is either I'm keeping all or none. Mm. Because even if I break one, I'm considered breaking all. Guilty of all, that's right. That won't hurt my heart there, boy. Mm. I gotta sit down on the ground for that. <laughs> you think I'm joking, you know? <laughs> Man, serious. The camera find me. <laughs> Why I'm sitting down is because there's some people are saying to me tonight that it doesn't matter if you break one. But my Bible I just read there is saying to me, if I break one, I'm guilty of oh. all. Mm. So I can start with the house first and then I can go to my guests. You might be keeping the Sabbath, but if you hate your brother, you're guilty of all. Mm. That's true. Yes. Say you understand where I come from? Say it again, Pastor. Let me start with the house first, then I get to my guests. You could be keeping the Sabbath, but if you hate your brother, you're guilty of all. Yes. And sometimes we think we are entitled because we are doing certain things. True. But the truth is God expects that we do all of it. Yes. Oh, yes. I don't think you get it home yet, you know. I want it seeping the, the pores and go in the, the veins and, and go to your brain and, and touch the cerebellum and stimulate the hypothalamus gland. Mm -hmm. All of that. Make the palpitations rise the rate of breathing and, and, and blood, blood vessels so the, the glucose can travel around your body and hit all the cells. Mm -hmm. And sleep leave you. <laughs> I'm saying tonight, God is clearly saying, you break one, you are guilty of all. Yes, that's the word. Because they're all from the same God. His character is in all. Yes. Amen. And if you missed it, there's a sermon we presented called Playing by the Rules. Mm -hmm. I, I refer you back. Can't preach it over the night. But what does verse 11 say? For he that said, do not commit adultery, uh -huh. said also, do not kill. Uh -huh. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor pa, 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 of the pa, 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 law. Pause there, mm -hmm. Where you reading from? Because them, them sound familiar. Mm -hmm. I know it upon the screen, but them, them don't commit adultery and don't kill sound familiar. Ten, ten commandments. Somebody Thanks tell the me they're nailed to the cross. Mm. No. Tell me no. No. You've been in trouble some, you know. Pastor Dale, I think you're a better friend. <laughs> Let me come over here. You, my reader betrayed me tonight. I, I, I'm saying when I hear thou shall not commit adultery, thou shall not kill, that sounds like commandments that nail to the cross. Tell me no. See, he betrayed me too. So if they're not nailed to the cross, and when James wrote this, Jesus had already gone back to heaven, then it means James was still under the opinion that those ten commandments, all ten of them, were still valid. applicable to the Christians. Still valid. Oh, yes. Very valid. Amen. Are you getting it? Mm -hmm. So James here, they said the brother of Jesus, is writing and telling the believers he's writing to because he doesn't say the name in the book. The book is named after him, not the people he wrote it to. He's saying, listen, if you break one, you break all. And, and what, is, what is the all? The all is this commandment, that commandment. Hello now. And some people say they're nailed to the cross. That is not what James is saying. But then here's the bombshell, verse 12. What does he say there? He says, so what? So speak ye and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Did you get that? He's saying you're going to be judged by this law. It gives you freedom. But how can law give me freedom? Well, as long as I, I live in within its limits, I'm free to walk about. I've told you before, I was driving in St. Vincent. I have a witness here. Sometimes the, 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 S, the, the SSU is on the road with their big guns and they're pulling over looking for their machetes and guns and drugs. 
And they, and they don't tell you when they're going to do it unless they got a little walkie-talkie and say, they're around the corner there, they're around the corner. And you, you take a different route. And sometimes they stay away. You can't take another route. True. You got to pass there or stay home. And they come up to your car and pull it over. I tell you, when I see them there, I drive through free because I know I ain't got nothing to hide. Amen. It's just like when I come to the airport and I say, do you have anything to declare? When I know I ain't got nothing, they say, I have nothing to declare. And I remember once there was a lady just digging up everybody's bag and everybody trying to get in another line and it's like going to her. Mm -hmm. And I went to her and said, where are you coming from? I told her. She said, what you got? I said, well, I got this here, to a little gift to give. She said, did you claim anything for your $500 duty-free clearance? I said, no, I haven't cleared anything. She said, you may go through. Amen. You see, when you're within the law, yes. you have freedom. Amen. You do. You see, I don't, know, I don't know if it's a true story, but I heard it. Young man sitting in a minivan and a policeman flagged it down, got in. He, like he didn't have a car and he sat down beside the fellow and all of a sudden the fellow started sweating like a pot cover. And the police said, are you all right, young man? And he just said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's sweating. And the police, with his training and experience, said, pull over this van, let me search you. And when they checked, the fellow loaded down with cocaine. Mm. You see, you got to sweat when you know you're in, in freedom. True. When you're not living right, you got to sweat. Mm. And I'm saying tonight, we don't have to sweat when it comes to Jesus. That's right. Amen. Amen. Because he came and died for us. Oh, yes. Thank you, He Jesus. experienced our suffering. So if we're in the, within the law of liberty, and don't get me wrong, don't think I say salvation by be obedience. Because you can't save yourself by obeying. I can show you that tonight. That's true. I can let the text show you. But I want you to see. So next question, preacher, reader. Let's go. What's the next question on the list? So we've discovered there's a day of judgment. We know who is going to judge. We know what is going to be the judgment. Hello now. But my next question is, who in the world, because God says the world will be judged, who in the world will be judged? Are there any group of people that get exemptions? Hmm. You know, if they got some CD plates, they can walk through. Yes. Or if they got a passport that marked that's diplomatic. Certain color, that's right. You, you, the police just can't touch you, you're like butter. Hmm. You got to appeal to the country you represent for them to take away your diplomatic immunity and then you get punished by them. True. Are there diplomatic people here on earth that will escape the judgment? <laughs> You like you read my script. Well, let's see what Romans 14 says. And then we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 5.10. Hear what it says. It says, so then. Every one of us shall give account of himself uh -huh. to God. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. So it says, every one of us shall give account for what? Himself. So it does not matter if your father is a pastor. That's your right. husband is a pastor. Your mother is a bishop in a church. It says every man, jack, woman, and child must give an account for himself. Self, that's right. So you can't pay no penance and get nobody from the judge. No, no. Mm -mm. You can't put something on the table and say, Rev, let him name pass away. You can't do that. Because God himself says everybody will have to give account for himself. Must. But watch this, 2 Corinthians 5.10 gives us a little more detail. Hear what Paul says, for we must walk. All appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Uh-huh. That everyone may receive the things done in his body. Ouch. According to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Did you get that? Mm hmm So he says, everything you have done in this flesh... Yeah, forgive a conk of it. That's and right. note he says, whether it is good, good or, or whether it is bad. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to sit on this one. This is, I got to sit when I reason it like this. Now one thing I've discovered with man's court, it is only based on the evidence you present mm -hmm. that they can adjudicate. <laughs> That's true. Mm -hmm. So if you get evidence suppressed or thrown out, yes, or the evidence is contaminated. Mm -hmm. What I mean by contaminated? It means, let's say I have a gun in my, 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 my suitcase. And I have bullets in my suitcase. And you go in, you put my suitcase through the scanner. And you see those things in your x-ray machine. But before you call me, you open the suitcase and say, it's a gun for truth. Yes. 
Yeah, you put it in your hand, you know, but you open, open my suitcase it. to confirm what you see in the x-ray is what is in the bag. Mm-hmm. And then you call me and say, Miss Pagin, Mr. Terrence Haynes, please come to the uh, agent. And I come and say, yes, please, I'm Terrence Haynes. Can I see your passport? I show it. They say, can you follow me? And they carry me to the, the back room where the x-rays are. And when I get there, the first thing I see is my bag is open. Open. Mm-hmm. Even though I know I have the gun and the bullets in there. True. When I look at the bag open, my lawyer is going to rejoice. I sure bet. I'm going to say, I want, I invoke my right, I'd like to speak to my lawyer. Mm-hmm. Oh, he got time to hide because he's asking for a lawyer. You see, when you go to the, these situations, they've got the right people. True. Hmm. When my lawyer comes, I will remain silent. I ain't care what the police shout at me or do with me. I ain't got nothing to say. When my lawyer comes, I will whisper him, the bag was open, so I'm going to frame him. That's, that's right. Yeah. You weren't supposed to hear that. Well, you're listening between <laughs> the lawyer and his client. That is pri- privileged information. <laughs> so when my lawyer comes, he's going to say, gentlemen, is this the state you found the bag? Yes, yes. Got to think they got me. And I'm going to say my bag was never open. Mm-hmm. The evidence, the chain of evidence is now broken, broken. because That's somebody right. could have been doing agriculture. Don't translate. Yes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You go on quiet. You see, someone ain't understand that little slang. So let me break it down. Somebody planting something on me. But even though I know I put it in the suitcase because I'm carrying a gun for somebody else and I shouldn't be doing it, once the bag is open, you can't touch me on that. That's true. Mm -hmm. Because my lawyer, my defense lawyer will say, but somebody could have put that gun in there. How do you know? Mm-hmm. No, no, it was, oh, it was in there in the x-ray machine, so where's the picture? But even if it was there, you open my bag. That's right. That picture could be taken after, after you put it in Correct. and then take the scanner. Yes. Are you with me? Mm-hmm. That's why when they call you to, the, to, ex, to examine your bag, your bag is closed. Yeah, it must be. You identify it first. Yes. You sign to say, that's my bag. Then they put on their gloves so that they, their fingerprints won't be there. And then they open the bag in your presence. And what comes out is now your responsibility. Mm. And here's what they also ask. Have you left this bag unattended at any point? Yes. And if you're foolish enough to say no, you just incriminate yourself. Yeah. Because yeah. whatever in it is yours. Yes. That's why when they travel, I ain't taking nothing for people. Mm. <laughs> I don't even want to brush up too much on you because if you brush up with cocaine and other stuff and you come and brush for me, you're transferring. And when they're doing the little test and they wipe me and put it in that little device, do, 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 I'm guilty. You don't get it. But here's the truth. I say all of that because my wife used to say I talk too much. I say all of that for this much. I say all of that. I want you to understand something. God is not depending on your lawyer to present any evidence. He is taking it every day you live. Oh, yes. The angels are recording what you do. Mm -hmm. Even the thoughts in your head, they're being recorded. Yes. So you can't bring no lawyer and say, but but the the, the framing me, God framing me. He said, no, 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 I ain't play the video. And you can see he's sitting down there. That pastor talking, train word about my church. Think I look he did. Lee, you get dizzy again. Mm. I will see you smiling, but the angel's recording your brain what you said. True. And they'll play it back with exactitude. Mm-hmm. And you can't deny it because your own lips that saying it. That's how serious this thing is. Yes. And it frightens me because some people think they, they, they got friends in high places. <laughs> I don't have any. Oh, but look what Jesus says. What shall be reviewed, reader? What, what mm. did Jesus say will be reviewed? Listen to what it says. He says, but what? But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, Ouch. they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Did you get that? Mm. So you know some of us has gaff a lot and make a joke. He said, boy, I was slapping your head. You what? You what? Are you joking? Are you joking? <laughs> idle words. What else it says? It says, by what? For by thy words thou shalt be justified, uh-huh. and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Did you get that? So watch this. You love Jesus. I do. I love Jesus. 
Then if you love Jesus, come and serve him. That's an idle word. Mm. Oh, you didn't mean it. You're gone quiet. You stand up. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. And then the Lord said, give up that, give up that jewelry. Give up that cigarette. All of a sudden, you got cold feet. Mm. You're gone quiet. I hear the amens. <laughs> Spirit speaking to your conscience now. Yes. I tell you, this is not entertainment. So when you say, I love Jesus, all those who love Jesus, please stand. And you stand up. If you ain't mean it, you, you bring a condemnation on yourself. Help us, Lord. You didn't get that. You say, I, I, I'm, I'm pledging. I'm going to support the new, the new brethren that joined the faith community. I'm going to be there. But when they say, um, can you bring a little pie for, for, for lunch next week for them? I ain't got no time. You little, 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 little bread and fish to bring you. Let them serve the Lord. I, come in. I, I didn't get all of that. Hmm. But you forget your promise. You support them. Yes. Jesus himself, I put it in red. He says, every word you're going to be judged by. And I've learned sometimes don't open your mouth. <laughs> True. Well, you don't I'll never forget I was in a church. They were asking for building funds. I didn't ask the right questions. And they say, oh, who, who will bring two sheets of galvanized? I said, well, two sheets of galvanized can't be so expensive. So I put up my hand. <laughs> a few weeks later, somebody said, Pastor, you have almost $200 for your church. I said, do what? <laughs> I said, no, no. I said, well, Pastor, you said you raised your hand for two sheets and a sheet of galvanized is 90-something dollars each. <laughs> I, I, I could not pull back. <laughs> I bite my lip and said, Lord, next time I'll ask more questions. <laughs> That's right. So what am I saying tonight? Jesus says, by your words. By your words. So we've discovered uh, e e enough now, but watch, watch this. Hear what? Matthew says, hello now, hear, hear, what, hear what Matthew says with respect to the same subject, you know, we, we said it Matthew 12, 36 and 37, but then I, I, I want to go a little bit. If by our words, if Christians speak good words, they then they have to worry, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but do you know Christians going to be judged too? That's right, everybody. Hear what it says there. It says this here in Matthew 12, 36 and 37. Did we just read that? Yeah, that's what it said. I think we said there. Yeah, there's a different text. A different text. Mm -hmm. Going on, it says, therefore what? Judge nothing before the time. Uh-huh. Until the Lord come. Uh-huh. Who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness. Yes. And will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. Ah, you got that. But I don't feel that's the right text I want you to get. It's saying something else. But let, let, let me jump forward to a text of better. I think that might be a little trouble there. But watch this. I scrubbed that one for now. Let me go to this one. You know, sometimes in preparing the sermon text, get you confused. But watch this. Peter is saying here that judgment will begin with the Christians. Mm -hmm. All right. Did you get that? Lord. No, no. When I saw that text in my script preparation, I got to sit down on this one. And I said, but once I declare I'm a, a Christian, Pastor Dial uh, and Rita, everything should be safe. Why God, God judge me? Hmm. hmm? But, but, but my note, it says judgment begins with a Christian. Yes. Which says that God is going to make this judgment as fair as, as possible. possible. Mm -hmm. Amen. Did you get that? He's a fair God. Hmm. No, no, another thought crossed my mind. It's not in the Bible, but, but I think when that text was said, Peter said that, he remembered himself. Yes. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. Why Peter remembered himself? Because in the upper room, Jesus said, the shepherd will be struck and the sheep will be scattered. And Peter says, no, Lord, I'm going with you. <laughs> and Jesus looked at him and says, Peter, I tell you tonight, the devil has desired 
to sift you, you as wheat. Like wheat. Mm -hmm. But I have prayed I for, for you. you. Amen. When thou art converted, mm -hmm. strengthen, strengthen your brethren. Your brethren. Why did he say that? He says, because before the cock crow three times, you can deny me. And Peter swore, that nah, I ain't gonna do that. But you know, when reality hit, when the folks took Jesus, when they had Jesus arrested, a lady, you know, you, you can't hurry, you gotta be a Bajan. Uh, you gotta be a Vinci. You gotta be a Jamaican, you know, so I may talk like that. Yeah, I may try for something like them, but I mean, I can't meet them, no. Mm. But here's the truth the Peter's accent you. gave him away. Yeah, his speech betrays you. And the lady said, You gotta be one of them. And to prove he wasn't a Christian, he put some pips. You know, the old people say, Put some pips. <laughs> he swore saying he wasn't a disciple. And they knew Jesus didn't use that language. So when they heard Peter use it, they said, Nah, he can't be the man. Jesus never used them language. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Did you get that? Yes. But then, er, 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 mm. he, he, he remembered he what remembered. Jesus said. Yes. So I believe when Peter wrote that text, he remembered himself and said, there are many Christians that claim certain things, but they aren't sincere like I wasn't. True. That's true. So God is going to judge all of us. Every last one. To prove that we're sincere. Mm -hmm. It's not just enough to stand up and say, I'm a Christian, I go to this faith. I'm a Christian, I, mean, I lead out in this. God is saying, you got to be sincere. Amen. Are you getting what I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. Oh, but let's go forward again. Jesus again speaking. He says what? What if, if you believe in Jesus, you're safe. Mm -hmm. But what happens to the person who does not believe in Jesus? What happens to the person by their attitude and behavior prove that they don't believe in what Jesus came to do? Mm. Hear what he says there. He that believeth on him that is what? Is not condemned. Uh-huh. But he that believeth not yes. is condemned already. Did you get that? Ouch. Mm. Ouch. I feel that. So it says, if I reject what Jesus came to offer me, I'm in trouble. Mm-hmm. Because Jesus came to take me from condemnation. That's right. So if, I, if I'm drunk in and the lifeguard comes and throws something, no, 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 I want that pretty girl to, 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 to save me. Hmm. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. If the lifeboat comes and throws something, but I'm watching the pretty girl on the boat, I want she to come and, and jump in and hug me, not you. Hmm. You ever hear somebody drunk in choose who to save them? <laughs> You're so glad to see somebody to That's save right. you. But, but we can't pick and choose. But if you say to Jesus, I, I don't want your terms of salvation. I won't do it my way. You know, somebody says, I did it my way. Mm -hmm. uh, Frank. But Frank, check it. You can't tell God how to save you. That's right. Because if you say, well, I don't want those terms of saving, then Jesus says, you're in trouble already because I am trying to take you out of the waters of death, but you're rejecting it on my terms. Mm -hmm. And we look at that body and say, idiot. But are we not dangerously sliding the same way, telling God how you want to be saved? True. Is it a dangerous thing that you look at what God's words say and you say, I can't live with them standards. I, I, good, I good way is. Hmm. That's dangerous, friend. Yes, it is. We can't choose the escape route. We just got to jump through it. Yes. When you get on a plane and you go in the plane, or any of you who fly, they give you the safety drill first and they tell you where the seats are, the exits are. Yes. You have two, three exits on this plane, That's two it. sides and one in the back. Mm -hmm. And they say, take time to see which is the closest exit to you. Mm -hmm. You'd be stupid if the plane crashed and you say, well, I ain't going back there, going to the front. <laughs> you didn't get that. So you can't choose how God saves you. You just have to accept it. But if you reject the way he's saving you, then you are asking for the consequences of your sin. Yes, you are. I hope I'm making sense tonight. Plenty, plenty, preacher. Oh, but watch this. I asked the question, and it, it comes in order. Since some people may not like the terms that God is providing for salvation, do I get a choice to defend myself? I know there's some criminals or persons who are in remand 
they, they did a little read a few books yeah, yeah. or they're pretty technical on how they express themselves and they will say your honor I'm representing myself so, mm -hmm. and the judge will say are you sure you want to do that I say yes your honor I am confident and they're eloquent in how to defend Correct. They might not use the legal jargon, but their common sense is so basic and sound, the judge will say, well, the man has a point. Prosecutor, what is your defense to that? Um, we, we, we didn't look at that. Um, can we ask for a, 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 a adjournment, please? And you say, hmm. well, the man got a point. We didn't check that. He come back and say, well, we withdraw the case. Hmm. Can I do that with God? Oh. Can I say, God, I, I can do it myself. I can defend myself with you. Come on and take my chances. Well, the scripture, here it is. Hear what Isaiah says. First, Isaiah, it says what? Isaiah 64, 6, it says what, reader? But we are all as an unclean thing. Uh-huh. And all our righteousnesses are as filthy rights. Uh-huh. Do you and get that? Yes. And we all do what? Fade as a leaf. Mm -hmm. And our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Did you get that? So, so Isaiah is saying to his people, and by extension to all of us, we had the same problem, sin problem. He's saying, listen, God is going to judge this world in righteousness according to him who he sent. So the standard is Jesus. Mm -hmm. But if I say I am going to come with my own righteousness, when we step in the court, it says, mm -mm -mm, filthy rags. That's right. Your righteousness doesn't match his. His is spotless clean. Mm -hmm. Yours filthy already. Okay, and I want to bring home the gravity of what we say here when it says filthy rags. It is talking about a used sanitary napkin. Mm. The lady sitting here is a pastor. We don't talk about them things in church, you know. <laughs> so why would you want to use them in the defense of your righteousness? Mm. Have mercy is right. Now you understand the gravity of this thing. But it doesn't stop there. One text don't make a sermon. That's true. Hear what Jeremiah says. And Jeremiah lived through a rebellious people. A people who were defeated by God's allowance. And, and going into exile and come back 70 years later. Hear what he says in Jeremiah 13, 23. It says what? Can the Ethiopian change his skin? Uh-huh. Or the leopard his spots? Did you get that? Mm-hmm. Now, we don't have leopards here in Barbados. We never had a zoo. If you go Guyana, you'll see it because that's one of their national wild animals. But we, we know what Ethiopians look like. Mm. We, we have some commonality with the, the motherland. That's right. So when it says the Ethiopian, he's talking about those who have the brown menelin like we do. Yes. So he says, can you change your spots, your, your color skin? Now, some people say, my God. <laughs> well, he wasn't, from what I understand, that was a problem he was dealing with and he tried to solve it. But the natural skin tone you can't change, even when you bleach, you still ain't get white. True. Somebody <laughs> go on quiet. Hmm. So it says, if you can change your skin tone, and if the leper can drop out those, those colors in its skin, hmm. then, 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 so you can do good. Yes. If you're accustomed to evil. evil. It's a rhetorical sure. question. The answer is no. no. So clearly the prophets are saying you don't dare go to the judgment and defend yourself. Mm, you can't. That's serious, Pastor. Yes. So let's review a little bit more. We know that a day is coming. We know that the Father won't judge us, but Jesus will. Yes. We know we'll be judged by the law of liberty which we discover is, by James is the Ten Commandments. Yes. Hello, no. We know that everybody is included. Christians as well as non-Christians. We, we also know that it would be a waste of time to defend ourselves in this judgment. Mm -hmm. Somebody's hearing me. Yes. So my question is, as I turn the corner, see the finishing line, is it any hope in the judgment? Hmm. Absolutely. So far, what I showed you tonight sounds like we doom. Mm, looking bleak. We can't defend ourselves. We can't live life righteous. We doom. We in trouble. Mm. And I thank God, heaven records, that's not true. Amen. So, Pastor, if there is hope, is God willing to help me? Oh, absolutely. Is there a text that says God is willing 
to help me? Mm -hmm. Let the Bible speak. Now, I, I, I want to show you something. Now, this is a, an artist's impression of the heavenly ministry of Jesus. Now, normally, some faith communities only stop at what happened at the cross. And they say that what is happening at the cross covers everything. I want to let the Bible speak tonight and say yes. we need what happened at the cross to be applied on our behalf. Oh yes, amen. You didn't get that. What saves us is what Jesus did at the cross, but it has to be applied to us. Yes. What do I mean by that? If you're in, in debt, you owe rent. Even if I write a check for all the rent for the rest of your life in the house, that check is no good if you don't put it in your name to the landlord. That's true. Mm -hmm. Now what gets me out of debt for the landlord is not my putting the check, is that somebody wrote the check. Yes. I, 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 I want you to understand yes. the analogy. It is the money of the person who owns the check that will get me out of debt and keep me out of debt. However, it is putting the check forward to the landlord in my name that makes sure that that money covers me. So it's the money from the owner of the check that has solved my problem, but I have to apply it in the hand of the landlord and say, this is on my behalf. Amen. It's the same thing with salvation. I am saved by grace because I believe what Jesus did. But that sacrifice must be applied to my account. Yes, amen. Let the Bible speak. Now watch this, John 2 verse, 1 John 2, 1 and 2. Hear what it says, my little what? My little children, do what? These things write I unto you. What are you writing, John? That ye sin not. So pause. When you are saved by grace, the standard still applies. Don't sin. Yes. It was sin that make you need a sacrifice. And therefore, when the sacrifice is applied, it brings you back to a state that you shouldn't go back to sin. True. Mm -hmm. Do you get that? Yes. When God saves you, he brings you to a point where you need not go back to sin. It's like when the police stop you for speeding. And you give him a good excuse and he feels sorry for you. He says, all right, go along. But he doesn't expect you to go racing again. Because <laughs> if he catch you racing again, and I have seen it, you go before the judge and say, is he known to the court? <laughs> and if you're known to the court, your judgment is different than if you're new first time. True. So getting grace is not licensed to go and sin again. So when God forgives us, it is with the expectation, like he said to the woman caught in adultery, go and sin no more. Yes. So if I'm doing something that's wrong according to the word of God, when I apply grace, I can't keep doing it anymore. That's right. So if I'm not keeping his commandments, especially the fourth one, and I apply the blood of Jesus, I can't say I'm now under grace, but I'm still breaking the fourth one. Hmm. You didn't get that, preacher. Pastor Dale, I got it wrong? If I'm breaking the fourth and the blood of Jesus is put on me, and I say, I got Jesus, I'm saved by grace, I can't continue to break the fourth one. Hmm. It says I don't understand what the grace was for. True. So, so hear what it says. Here John saying it in verse 1. He says, my little children, these things I write to you that you sin not. That was always the goal. They were not to disobey God. He says, and if any man does what? Sin. We have an advocate with the Father. Pause. Pause. Mm -hmm. If my legal knowledge is correct, you don't have an advocate with the court. You have an advocate for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True. The court is not biased for you. The court is blind. That's why the lady justice got on a blindfold. So she does, she's not prejudiced. Yes. She comes to see the truth. The truth must sell you. If you don't have any truth, sorry for you. So you are not lined up with the court. You are lined up with your lawyer standing for you. But watch the text says, you have an advocate with who? The father. In essence, he's saying God himself wants to save you. Oh, yes. Amen. 
it doesn't stop there. It says, who is that advocate? Jesus Christ, the righteous. Did you get that? Legal language. You need a righteous man to bring out your righteousness before a righteous God. And watch what verse 2 says. He's what? He is the propitiation for our sins. Now, what is propitiation? We don't use it anymore, but sacrifice. it's a Greek word that talks about is the sacrifice that appeased for the law that is broken. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, it is wind up in the concept that the law being broken makes the gods angry. And therefore, offering a requested sacrifice will stay the wrath of God. Now, that's the original language that Paul borrowed it from. But Paul puts new meaning. Paul says Jesus is the sin bearer. He's the, like John. He's the lamb that takes away the sin of the world. Amen. Jesus stands in my space, your space, and suffers my consequences so that you don't get your, what you deserve. And for you to watch that happen and then still go about sin says you don't appreciate the blood. Mm. For you to see Jesus dying for you but you still going to commit fornication or adultery says you don't appreciate the blood. Mm. For you to see Jesus die for you and you still holding malice and hatred to others says you don't understand what Jesus did for you. It's true. Help us, Lord. But that's the first part. That's the sacrifice. It is made. But now we must apply that sacrifice to our lives. To our conch. Amen. Another time, maybe next week. Who knows? If it pray for me long enough, next week I'll give you the sermon. <laughs> but watch this. Listen to what the second part is now. Hebrews 7.25, wherefore what? He is able also to save them to the uttermost uh -huh. that come unto God by him. Yes. Seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. What's that word? Intercession. intercession. So it tells me that Jesus is in heaven interceding. Yes. That's He's the word. coming between me and my sins. When I plead the blood of Jesus, he saying, Father... I'm interceding for this group down here. Amen. Somebody has been playing lotto, but the no, they can't depend on it because it's going to waste the time. The Tiffany family money, but they got down on the knees and said, Jesus, one more time, forgive me. And Jesus says, I take you at your word. Father, my blood. Somebody is running with Amen. Mrs. Jones. Me and Mrs. Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Jones. But your little guilt hits you. You go to the doctor and think you got the big H. Mm. But it's just something that clap in your hand, don't translate. <laughs> and you're afraid you're going to die, but then the, you, you reach out to God honestly, and Jesus says, my blood, please for him. Amen. Somebody going to a party, and some idiot coming with a gun and packs in, and you think you're going dead. A bullet fly past here. He said, Lord, my dead. Lord, if I get this party, I can go to church. And God says, Father, he pleads my blood for him. Amen. You're going quiet. When we cry out in sin with sincerity, that's the word. Jesus is in heaven interceding. Yes. And the Holy Spirit makes groanings. Romans 8 tells me that. It translates my prayer. Sometimes we don't know what to pray. But the Holy Spirit translates it, takes it to heaven, and, and put it before Jesus. And his blood is mixed with it. And the Father says, I am satisfied. Amen. All of that going on to keep us alive. Do not think the devil don't plead for your soul at night. Hmm. Hmm. Some of you lying on the bed of sin and the devil said, give him. He is mine. He put my terrain. And Jesus says, no, nah, not yet. Don't touch him. Because somebody prayed for me. They had me on their Amen. mind. They sacrificed their time. They fell down on their knees and prayed for me. They had no doubt that God could bring me out. That he could change my life and set me free. I am so glad that someone prayed for me. Amen. And I watching granny in the house. Yes. When it's get vexed when granny say, don't go this place. 
and push it on her face. She old school. She ain't know what she's doing. But she burning she knees for one of them. That's right. And sometimes it's not your smartness that save you. It's Granny's prayer that God answers oh, because yeah. he says she's faithful. So true. So true. Some we think we're smart, but it's God's grace that's keeping us. That's why we need Jesus to intercede. Oh, yeah. So it's not just a cross, but we need the intercession. So clearly, God wants to, God wants to save us. Yes, he does. Oh, but I'm not done yet. Romans 8.1. It's not just enough to say, Jesus, you died for me. You've got to walk in grace. Oh, yes. Amen. You didn't get that. It, it's like this. Spirit. You're pregnant. The little stick showed you're pregnant. The morning sickness says you're pregnant. But if you go lifting heavy things and playing you superwoman, you're going to be having an abortion or a miscarriage. Let me say it right, a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. So when you know you're pregnant, some things got to change. Yes. You got to build up your body so that child come out healthy. Yes. You got to leave that alcohol alone because you can mash up the baby brain from the alcohol. Even when your boyfriend taking the marijuana, you can't go wrong. You can't come wrong. You smoking it, cause it goes in you and into the placenta, into the child, and the, the baby brain getting affected. What am I saying? You don't make the child grow, but you gotta keep the child in an environment that is safe. Yes. You can't save yourself, but you gotta stay in grace. Amen. Amen. So that when Jesus burst the clouds of glory, you can say, delivery day done. Oh, yeah. So what it says there, it says what, read it? There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, mm -mm. but after the spirit. Goodbye, world. I stay no longer with you. Amen. So you can't expect to be in grace, but you're following every skillet that knocking. A chicken, lick 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 a chicken, 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 chicken. It's a culture. It might be a culture, but it can't be a controller. All right. Amen. Oh, but what else, preacher? What else, preacher? Hear what it says there. Jesus himself speaking. He says what? Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, uh -huh. him will I also confess before my Father which is in heaven. So it means you gotta live a life declaring, I'm God's child. Amen. I follow Jesus. And you can't say it but not do it. But hear what the opposite says. But whosoever shall deny me before men, uh -huh. him will I also deny before my Father mm. which is in heaven. Mm. Mm. I ain't adding nothing to that. Amen, Jesus. You said it straight. Mm -hmm. Cancer past the hands, put your own spin on it. Oh, oh, but watch this here now. Watch what he says there. We got to bear fruit. Yes. What does it say there, reader? Matthew 7, verse 20 and 21. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. By your what? Fruits. It's not enough to say, I am a tambourine tree. I got to get tambourine, come off the tree. That's right. Read on, verse 21, it says that. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. You get that? It's not enough to say, Lord, Lord. If you go to the Bible, where that text is from, it says some will say in the end day, didn't it we not cast out devils right. in your name? And some you never even see devil. Far less cast it out. And Jesus said, Men know you. That's right. Who you be? Never knew you. Depart from me, your work or iniquity. So it's not enough to got a nice little cross or crucifix on your chest. Or your ear. It's not enough to walk with the Bible. Mm -hmm. You gotta live a mere fruit. Amen. Ay, ay, ay. Amen. Oh, but watch this, friend. I might say these things and people say, oh boy, I got to do this thing. If not, I'm in trouble. God doesn't want you to do it for fear. That's right. He wants you to do it because you love him. Love. Mm -hmm. He says what? If you love me, keep my commandments. That's what it's about. Amen. And I want to stress that. Don't let the sermon frighten you. Oh God, may I dead, so may I run for Jesus. God is not a fire insurance. True. But I've discovered 
When you see somebody love you, there's nothing you won't do for them. That's right. I remember when I was growing up, there was some stuff my mom, mom didn't want me to do. She can watch it. She's watching the stream. I get she back chat and I vex. And I remember my older brother, God rest him in the grave, look at me one day and said, Terrence, you're ungrateful. Your mother love you, but you're hardened. And if you don't hear, you can feel. Thank God for bigger brother. Mm. It knocked some sense in my head. <laughs> no, no one has said ever come again, that hurt. <laughs> it knocked some sense in my head. And my attitude changed. I wasn't perfect, but my attitude changed. And I'm saying tonight, when you love somebody and appreciate how they love you, you're not going to hurt them. Amen. That's right. You hear people getting shoot up. Poor fella. But you phone buzz tonight and you realize it's your family that you love get shoot up. You're going to drop down here. God that's, forbid. That's true. Why? Because it's no touching you. True. And I want to suggest tonight we don't appreciate God's love and sacrifice because he's not as close as we think he is. Mm. He says, if you love me, you'll friend. do what I say. Right. Oh, friends, but God promises something for you. Revelation 3, verse 5, my last text for the night. Then afterwards, I'm going to make my appeal. I can't just teach this subject and then don't give you a chance to respond. But hear what it says there. Read it. Help me read it. He that overcometh, uh -huh. the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Yes, please. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. Pause right there. It tells me that my name might be in the book already. That's true. And you know, it is true. When I accept Jesus and have new life in Christ, he puts my name in the book of life because I have Amen. new life in Christ. Amen. And as long as I keep in the zone of grace, the name stays. Yes. And my sins are blocked out. Amen. But if I don't overcome, the opposite is true. My name goes and my sin remains mm. you didn't get that oh help me finish read it to read it but i will confess his name before yes. my father and before his angels did you get that jesus is willing to declare you as his before the highest level of this universe amen praise the lord he says but you gotta overcome Oh, yeah. But I love it. He didn't give us the ability to do it by ourselves. He came down to my level. Praise the Lord. When I couldn't get up to him, with a strong arm, he lifted me up. Oh, yes. And showed me what living is. Amen. He'll come down to your level if you open up the door and make your life worth living. That's what he came for. Oh, yes. Oh, my organist is on the organ. I've told you night after night, no life in Christ. And when you accept his offer, make an exchange, your life for his. As our special music said, an interpretation of C.C. Wynan, He's been faithful. He's been good. Oh, yes. If you really appreciate that, you shouldn't be running from God. Running to. You should be running to God. Amen. And I repeat it. If you're breaking one, God sees you guilty of all. I didn't make up the text. You saw it tonight. Jesus is calling. Oh, yes, he is. So that when the verdict is in, we can say, Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. I'm saved by grace. Yes. Amen. Tonight, somebody want to stand up in the premises because they're claiming the promises 
and you want to say Jesus thank you there is hope oh, in yes. the judgment Amen. if that's you you want to say thank you Lord just stand where you are praise the Lord Amen. you want to say Jesus your judgment strict but your grace is even more oh, yes. overflowing Amen. oh praise God tonight Oh, you keep playing, organists, keep playing. I want them to think about the words, all to Jesus I surrender. And friends, God did not come here to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. Because we already condemn. We are on spiritual death row. But thank God tonight, we can be pardoned. Amen. And set free. Oh, yes. So I'm making my appeal. And I'm, like last night, I ain't doing no long thing. I believe if you know that you can't meet the judgment without having Christ, but you don't have him, join me at the altar. Amen. On the contrary, if you want to run it your own and take a risk, and you know what the consequence will be, you stay where you are. Main fear, force in the body tonight. That's right. Tonight, you want Jesus. You want the assurance that he's offering you. Amen. Then join me at the altar. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm going to cut off this appeal just when the Spirit says to do it. And then I'm praying and I'm going home and sleep. Not because I don't care, but because I'm not forcing you to accept a good thing. That's right. If you know you need to be at the altar, I'm saying step out now. I praise God for those who stepped out. Amen. There are others who can step out. Amen. If you've come here before, you can step out again. I've always oh, told yes. you that. Oh, yes. Stepping out helps somebody to come. And even if tonight is your first night, it will not be your last night once you accept Jesus. That's right. Amen. Oh, praise God. Amen. Somebody else to come. Oh, praise God. Amen. Somebody else to come. Oh, praise God. somebody else to step out remember tonight I'm not asking you if you're in a church nothing I've shown you in the scriptures as if you're in a church is asking you if you're following Jesus oh yes he's asking if your life is covered in his righteousness and I'm calling again I'm right here at the front I am not going to drag it out as long as you're coming I'll hold but I'll close it I'm consistent when I end not always but I'm consistent to keep my promise by God's grace Amen. maybe there's somebody else to come you haven't come to the altar and this is not just for my guests but even members who know they're living clean this altar is for you too. Is there somebody else to come? Is there somebody else to come? Oh, praise God. I'm keeping this altar just bubbling a little bit longer. I'm inviting you to come, friend. You're never too young to be saved. Neither are you too young to die. So just step out. You're not losing anything if you accept Jesus. But you can lose everything if you reject Jesus. That's true. Oh, praise God. If you're coming, just come. Amen. Just come. And for those who have come up here, they can tell you, Pastor Haynes, don't force them to do anything. 
Pastor Haynes don't shove nothing on them. I bring you up here and I, I celebrate with the angels. And then I talk with you for two minutes and I let you go. Somebody knows I'm telling the truth. Just raise your hand. Yes. You've been up to the altar before. If you know it's the truth, just raise your hand. Oh, praise God. You're not here, not here to trick you. You're big adults. You can speak for yourself. But I want to call. Amen. I'm closing this appeal as I as I wind down, I, I get my signal. So I'm calling. I'm pleading. Just step out and come. And I love it tonight. Somebody brought somebody new to the altar. Amen. That's how it's supposed to be. Amen. You don't come by yourself. You look for your friend and say, come. Maybe there's somebody else. If you need to come, there's a bench space. If you need to come and sit down, just step out. But don't stay where you are. Let God has his way in your life. We're not calling for church membership. We're calling for Jesus in your life. Oh, yes. And if you know you're not keeping what God showed tonight, step out in faith. Don't worry about what somebody can think. Worry about what God will think tonight. Oh, yes. It's he who died for you. Not man. Not an angel. It's Jesus. Tonight my time is up. And I'm going to pray to close. But if I, even as I pray now and the Spirit moves you, just step out. Yes. You're not being irreverent if you come in the prayer. Because that's an important response to the prayer. Oh, yes. Oh, God and Father, tonight we've been clear as I've tried to be. Lord, your word tells us that you have a rendezvous with planet Earth. It's not an asteroid as the science fictions will show. It's not a tsunami. It's not an ice age. But it's a court case. And Lord, what I didn't say in the scripture, I can say in prayer. I mean, your presence, Lord, you don't need a judgment to know who's going to go down and those who are going to spend eternity with you. You know all things, Lord. But you do it so as to show that you're righteous. You have a verdict so that people can see you're not unfair. That's right. God forbid if I preach this series, but don't make it to heaven. And you're not going to hide it from them. You're going to show them why I didn't make it. That's why I put myself under the spotlight when I preach these messages. Because it's not about them only. It's about us, Lord. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And Lord, you've been clear. You bring it to us clear so that we can accept salvation full and free without force or duress. Mm -hmm. Thank you tonight. This altar is not empty. Praise the Lord. Thank you tonight that folks know a good deal when they see it. Oh, yes. Thank you tonight, Lord. Your word is true. Your word will not come back void, but it will accomplish what you said it to do. Amen. Thank you tonight that the blood of Jesus was not shed in vain. Praise the Lord. There are folks who are coming that want to be saved in Jesus. So, Father, put a seal on everybody here standing, thanking you for your grace, and thank you that you'll put a seal, a special seal on those who are saying, yes, Lord, give me new life. Amen. Protect them, Lord, for the devil is angry. He's going to bring old boyfriend. He's going to bring new boyfriend. He's going to bring auntie, nanny, even priests to discourage them. But I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let them only have eyes for you. Yes, Father. Put your spiritual blinkers on them that they won't hear or see anybody but Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the fact that somebody prayed for us that we are saved by grace. I pray for them, Lord, that they will accept and be saved by grace. And Lord, I have confidence because when we pray according to your will, we know you hear us. Yes, you do. And Lord, because I know you hear this prayer, you will answer it. Amen. So thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name.
Amen and amen. amen. So as always, I invite my guests who came to the altar in the, 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 the choir cheers for two quick minutes to just talk with you. All the others, I'll see you back tomorrow night when the topic will be... What's the topic, Pastor Dale? It says, when it matters most. When it matters most. Can't miss tomorrow night. God bless you and have a great night in Jesus. Amen. We will sing our theme song as we are about to depart. We'll see you again tomorrow night by the grace of God. Victory in Jesus. Thank you again for viewing the New Life in Christ Evangelistic Series. We look forward for you to tune in one more time as we meet again on this platform. And be sure to fill out the link below to give your prayer request or sign up for baptism. We are looking forward to hear from you. God bless you. See you again. <laughs>